All right, so I want to show everybody a demo of all the various features of Arcadian. This is the title screen, as you no doubt can tell. And first thing it starts out with, it wants to know what your difficulty level is. Do you want to do a walk in the park? A little help, please? I'm going to die. So I'm going to start with a walk in the park. And then it asks, what's the gameplay mode you want? Attack of the drones, fight the clone king, save the lunar city. Number four and five, Attack of the Drones and Fight the Clone King, are practice modes that let you learn how to play the game. And then number six, Save the Lunar City, is the actual full-blown game. So I'm just going to do Attack of the Drones. I want to give you an idea of what it looks like to fight the drones. So now I'm fighting the drones. As you can see, I'm in practice mode. That's why it says practice down there. What a drone is... They are four ships attached to each other into one big ship. These drones fly in orbit around the moon and they form a blockade that stops the humans on the moon from getting off the surface and getting help from the orbiting cities. So you have to work your way through the blockade to get to Heather Station, to get the supplies to help fight the revolution, and then return through the blockade, drop off the supplies, and keep doing this until you've received enough supplies at the Luna City so that you can now take off, fight the Clone King, and beat him. Or die. So, this is a full ship. There are three different full ships. If you touch it, as I just did there, if you touch a full ship, you take damage and the ship dies. If you touch a drone, the drone dies, you take damage. So that was probably not a good smart thing on my end. You can see I got damage out there. You can take three hits of damage and then your ship dies. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another hit. I've taken two hits of damage. My third hit was gonna kill me. See, that's a, this is the third formation of drones. You can move around half of the screen. When you're fighting the Clone King, your movement is limited. So, I'm going to hit this one. I'm going to hit this one take damage. Big explosion, lost the ship. As you can see down in the bottom corner, I lost one of my men, one of my ships. When it comes to scoring, every 5,000 points you get a ship for a maximum of 8 ships. And then you also get upgrades. At 2,000, the size of your hull increases, your cargo storage increases, and makes running the Heather Station easier because you can carry more back. Instead of four loads of cargo, you can carry eight loads of cargo back. Once you reach 2,000 and your hull gets increased. I mean, your storage gets increased. At 4,000, your hull, repuls hull repulsors are upgraded. So now instead of it taking three hits of damage to kill a ship, now it's going to take six hits of damage, so you're stronger. At 6,000, your engine is upgraded, and you can go faster, so you can avoid these things more. But then again, it's easier to run into stuff, too, unless you're really good with the joystick. And then at 8,000, your laser speed increases. So now that I've given you some of the background here, let me just show you. I hit him and he breaks up formation. Now he's four. Now if I shoot one of these, they will turn into a kamikaze fireball and drop on my head. You get points for each one. Up and I ran into him. When I run into him, they reset. So you turn into a kamikaze fireball, I shot it. Once all the drones are off the screen, the next drone comes in. And I'm still working on the wave patterns right now, how long the wave will be, how many ships are in each wave. You notice it plays a sound every time a new ship comes on the screen. Now this will continue on. This, this game will continue on because I'm in practice mode. The only way practice mode ends is death. I have to die. Okay, now I'm going through the enemy bombs, the kamikazes, and then I should be into the wave of small ships. So 
See, now it's small ones. Now it's not big ones. They, they start out immediately small. And if you notice, there is, well, maybe you won't notice, but there is a pattern to their movement. Not only are they going left and right, up and down, but they also have a variation that happens to their pattern. And it's, if you play it long enough, it, it does become predictable. Let's see. Where am I getting to? I'm getting to my storage increase. Let's just see what it looks like getting my storage increase, if I can survive long enough. I have a hard time playing this using the keyboard. I am just, I have never been a person that can play video games with a keyboard. You stick a Nintendo NES controller in my hand or an Atari 2600 joystick, and I can go forever. But you give me a keyboard, and every now and again, it seems like I gotta stop and look at the keyboard to figure out my key, my fingers are on the keys still. So let's just keep working through this here. Either I'm gonna die, or I'm gonna get to the hull upgrade. Or the storage upgrade. I wanna show you that how I... Oh, I made it, see? See my ship on the bottom is bigger now? My storage has been upgraded. And it played a sound in there too, but I probably didn't hear it because I was shooting so much. So, I'm gonna die off. So that's how you end practice mode. Is by dying. So I'm gonna go back to main screen. If you notice the music, it's by Amy Marie, Amy Marie Bienvenu, aka Amy Purple, aka New Coleco, aka Daniel Bienvenu. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. So let's do fight the Clone King. Again, this is practice mode, just to learn how to fight the Clone King. Now I'm going to get out of his way immediately, and. With the Clone King, you have an area on the sides where you can hide. Because they don't come over. They stay below the Clone King. Now, what we got going on here is the Clone King is up there. That's the little gray head. See him moving up and down? He's the Clone King. The Clone King can take 20 hits. Once you, give, once you hit him 20 times, then he's defeated. He changes color as he's being hit, too. The only way you can shoot is by shooting through that shield gap that's going past that little black square, or getting him when he comes down taunting you thinking that he's great, you can hit him then. At the same time, you also have to watch out for the drones that are flying around. And you'll notice in the difference in this, these drones and in the other mode is that the drones will switch over to firebomb kamikazes and just drop right on your head. So, let's see what we can do with the Clone King. And I do have him set to die early because I want to show you what happens when you die. I'm going to try to fight him here. It's not easy to get in here, but it is playable. See how he changes color as he gets hit? Now, the thing that's happening here, because I'm in practice mode, he'll never die. He just keeps resetting back. So you never get to see what it looks like if he dies. You only get to see what it looks like if you die. And I'm going to let myself die, just so you can see what happens. When I die, he sits in and taunts me. Now, let's go back to the beginning again. Now, I'm going to do story mode. Save the Lunar City. This is the game, actually. This is where you actually play. It has a story to it, obviously. The last of the rebels are, dry, are trapped in the Dome City. The monarchists have blocked the city. The Rebels' only hope is to get supplies from Heather Station. Now, just so you know, when that text is typing out, you can hit the fire button, and it will make the text go faster. So, I hit the fire button to take off. And I'm going to fight off this guy here. Down on the bottom corner, bottom right-hand corner, or left-hand, right below my ship there, that's my cargo meter. Normally it's empty, and as you get cargo from Heather Station and bring it back, it fills up. I have this set to be almost completely full, so I don't have to go through wave after wave to get there. Now, I have an issue here, and I just realized this. I had this set for a full waves of enemies, so I'm going to pause this, go into the code and change it so that I can get to Heather Station faster, because I want to show you what happens. 
Okay, so what I did is I went in and I changed it so that I only have a few ways of firebomb kamikazes coming at me. So that I can show you how the full game works without having to try to beat the game because, again, I'm not good at playing games. I love programming, but I'm not good at playing them sometimes. At least when it comes to the keyboard. So, I'm going to take off. So I just got a set to just drop some firebombs on me. And once you make it through a wave, you hear the whistling sound, you go to Heather Station. Heather Station loads you up. And if you are at a level to get an upgrade, Heather Station will tell you that they've upgraded you. So here we are. It's telling me I need to return back. They are fragile. If you take damage, they can be destroyed. Right now, I have four loads of cargo on me. If I get hit, I lose a load. So the most I can get back with right now is four. The least is one. Later on, if when my hull size and my storage is upgraded, then I can get back with eight. So, let's go back. And again, remember, I've got this set to be full on purpose. Got to make it through the waves. And again, I keep stressing. I changed it so that it's only just showing me a few enemies so that I can show you this. Comes back, lands on Lunar City, unloads. And since I had it set to be almost completely full, I brought back enough cargo. It's happy. We now have enough to defeat the Monarchus. Now attack their orbiting dreadnought and destroy it so we can win the ground war or ground battle. So, let's go attack the Clone King. And just so you know, I have it in the manual. And I'll just give you an idea of what's going on here with these people. See, this is just the first paragraph in the manual. In the year 2566, the last of the true human inhabitants on Luna are trapped in a dome city on the far side of Luna. Some of this has been edited. The Monarchists, a genetically modified race of people that can live in the vacuum on the surface have set up a seemingly impenetrable orbital blockade and are preventing supplies from reaching the dome city. Then it goes on explaining how you gotta get to Heather Station, get the supplies, bring them back so that they can build up their army enough so they can beat the Monarchists and everybody will be all happy. So that's your, that is your job when you're playing story mode. So now I'm gonna get through it again. I have this set very weak. Don't think it's the game is real simple, because it's not. I have a set so I can get through these because I want to show you what happens. Okay, now I'm in back here fighting the Clone King again. And he is set to die early. Because, ooh, I should stop running into things. I gotta hit him until he turns completely black. Don't kill me. I don't wanna die. There, I beat him. I beat the Clone King. I hadn't said to die early. The dreadnought blows up. I land down on the moon. Happy music. Fireworks all over the place. And I won. All right, and the last thing I want to show you is what happens when you die in story mode. So I went in and I set it so that I only had one ship. And I'm going to intentionally just die because I want you to see the, the ending, the cutscene for dying. I'm going to run into things just to take some damage. And the Clone King destroys the Lunar City. And he bounces in glee over the spaceport that was the Arcadian's home. There you go. So you saw all the various bits and pieces of the game. Hopefully you, you will consider purchasing it on 8bitmillygames.com. Look down in the description for a link. Have an awesome weekend and an awesome holiday and an awesome year and an awesome awesomeness. is your quick and dirty run through of the game without letting you watch me play it for hours or half hours or however long it takes somebody to get through all the various waves. But I wanted to show you what the game looks like. Have a good one.